on the invitation. And then I thought it would be kind of neat, since we got such strong feedback about Dr. McCulley, I thought it'd be neat to kind of um, say a few of those words in the introduction as well. Um, Dr. McCulley is a graduate of the Medical College of Pennsylvania. After completion of school, medical school, he joined the Navy and became a Naval Flight Surgeon. After earning his wings at Pensacola, Florida, he was, a, he was assigned to a Marine helicopter squadron, the Red Lions. Later, he was transferred to Marine FA-18 Hornet Squadron, the Sharpshooters. While working as a flight surgeon, Dr. McCulley treated pilots with alcohol and drug problems. As a physician, he advocates strongly for the rights of addicts as patients. He is now with the Institute of, for Addiction Studies in Utah and travels all over to the country speaking to family and friends of recovery. A couple words that we got through emails and just by talking to everyone. He is such a good speaker. I hope there is good attendance. I think there is. He was the doctor at my child's treatment center. He is riveting. He is indeed amazing. I heard him last month at a program, and I am delighted to have the opportunity to do so again. Dr. McCulley was a huge factor in helping our son get sober. And with that, I'd like to um, give you Dr. McCulley. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. It's such a warm welcome. I'm very grateful to come and get situated here. I'm already a little behind the eight ball, sorry. Um, yes, I live in Utah. I, uh, <laughs> I work for this group called the Institute for Addiction Study. It, it sounds a lot more fancy than it is. It's just three of us, and we, we kind of... Uh, <laughs> We kind of uh, fancy ourselves as a bit of a, an addiction think tank. And uh, the reason that we um, sorry, the reason that we, uh, we call ourselves that is because there are a number of intellectual problems that have started to crop up now that we actually have some uh, very effective medical treatment uh, uh, pharmacology. and. Uh, there are some questions, ethical questions, that are coming up. We wanted to make sure that uh, people in recovery had a voice in some of that. Um, and also, uh, I like to work on this problem. I've been working on it for about 10 years, and that's the question about whether or not addiction really is a disease. Now, I have to say, in the 10 years that I've been doing this, um, the public's uh, uh, perception of this question has actually changed so much that uh, I'm getting fewer and fewer lectures because everyone kind of, you know, is starting to accept it as a disease, at least uh, uh on a larger scale than 10 years ago. But it's still an interesting question, and um, so this is kind of all I do is think about this question. And um, uh, I love to do family groups because I find it very interesting to present this science and have um, patients say, oh, that's why I do that, and they feel more understood. Uh, and families hear it and say, oh, that's why he does that, uh, and they feel like there's a little more hope uh, and, and I think there is hope. I think this is a very, um, very exciting time uh, to get sober. Um, it's not going to be too long before this question is really quite moot and people aren't going to really understand what the debate was uh, you know, now. And I think that that's what makes people who are getting sober now, that's what makes their sobriety so precious because they're still getting sober in a world where there's still a great deal of stigma uh, against addicts. Um, so. Uh, I, uh, like I said uh, in, the, uh, in the introduction, I was a flight surgeon in the Navy. I uh, really loved this job. I just love taking care of pilots. They're an extremely exciting group. Um, they uh, don't trust their doctor right out the gate. So it's an <laughs> interesting clinical problem from the get-go. The doctor can only, you know, the flight surgeon can only harm you, don't go see him. And so um, <laughs> the, uh, the first thing you have to do is sort of uh, put your own ego on hold because it's really not about the doctor this time. It's really about them. They're the heroes. And uh, it's, it's all based on the quality of the relationship. I used to tell my pilots, you know, the only reason I've got gold wings on my chest is to protect the gold wings on your chest. When you see someone who loves something that much, and it's more than just a job thing. It really permeates their being. It is, I think, a spiritual thing for pilots. Um, you want to protect it. You want to make sure that they can do it for the rest of their lives. And, and so defending them was, uh, wa 
was uh, something I found you know, very gratifying. And it gave me a lot of skills, I think, uh, later when I would uh, talk to addicts, because um, they don't want to necessarily come to their doctors either. Um, <laughs> well, not, not after a while. At first they do, but then. <laughs> so anyhow, that's, that's me right there. Uh, and uh, so I love this job. And unfortunately, what happened was, um, well, I had to have a surgery to stay physically fit. I, I, uh, I couldn't take a medication and still fly, so I had this surgery. And at the end of that surgery, they gave me a big fat bottle of Percocet. And uh, I, uh, well, I had had Percocet in the past, and I didn't really much like the feeling. But this time, uh, under the stress of this job, and, and it was stressful, uh, one of these men did die uh, in those mountains just back there. Uh, it was a very stressful job. Um, and we'll get into why this is. I took the Percocet this time, totally different experience. And I won't get into the nitty gritty, but uh, within about nine months, I had a pretty severe intravenous Demerol problem. Uh, and you know, I tried to quit, um, especially when the job opened up to be flight surgeon to the Blue Angels. That was a good job. I wanted that job. And, uh, but I figured if it was, you know, I was going to be wearing a blue flight suit, it probably would be best not to be an intravenous narcotic addict. I mean, you <laughs> don't want to be signing autographs at an air show and bend over and have a needle fall out of your pocket. That's not going to look very, very good. And so I decided, you know, okay, that's it. I'm going to quit. And I ripped up my triplicates. And this is the thing. It's, it's when we try to quit on our own that we become very, very obvious. And I did. I became very obvious. And the Navy uh, caught me. <laughs> and they were pissed, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and so the the Navy, in their infinite wisdom, sent me to their long-term treatment facility for drug addicts. They have one. It's called Lebanon. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, so I, I have to say, when you go from the backseat of an F-18 Hornet to a maximum security prison cell, uh, it, it tends to get your attention. And it, and it got my attention. And the question sitting on my mind was this one right here. Is this really a disease, or am I just a dirtbag? Because there sure was, <laughs> there sure was a lot of evidence on the dirtbag side of the equation, <laughs> and so I had to know. I had to. I, I was. It's funny because even when I was in here, I, I knew that if they let me out, I was going to relapse just like that. Um, and I wanted to know why that was. I wanted to know why my because I deserved to be there. Why had I gone so wrong in such a short period of time? And we really learned nothing about addiction in medical school. We learned to hate addicts. It's just not weather. <laughs> I'm a big, severe weather fan. I'll wrap this up so we can go and go. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I had to know. I wanted to know. I mean, was I going to die? Was I going to live? And, and I knew that if they let me out, I would relapse. And so I decided that um, I would try to learn everything I could about addiction. Uh, and I ordered every book on addiction I could find. I ordered every journal article on addiction I could find. Stuff came pouring in to my to the prison mailroom and stacked up in my cell. And, and I read it and I read it and I read it and I, I couldn't believe what I wrote, uh, what I read. I mean, I, the science is simply amazing. And it still shocks me that there has been so much learned about addiction in the last 10 years. This research is just piling up and it is so exciting. And there's really no conduit to get it to the people who need it. And so really, it was just a selfish need of mine to know whether this was really a disease or not that I started to write this lecture uh, in my cell on a little piece of paper with a little stubby pencil. Because the Navy had given me a little time off of work and a nice quiet place to study, so <laughs> I figured I'd. And the result. <laughs> The result uh, is this lecture, and it has uh, taken on different forms, and I've been able to add to it. Um, one of the things that I find so exciting about this research is that it shows that the, what the old timers wrote in the basic text of Alcoholics Anonymous back in the 30s and 40s was right on the money, which I think gives tremendous validation to the, ad to the addict's experience. And I also think that it brings a lot of hope. Um, so I'm very optimistic about the future for this field. Um, interestingly, uh, they. They, they tore Leavenworth down about three years ago. Uh, it no longer exists. Um, it's a very emotional thing when they tear down your prison. I, <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that, but <laughs> kind of kind of bittersweet. But uh Anyhow, this is sort of the line of battle is that uh, you'll kind of find folks either in the disease camp 